Before Don Lewis would be featured in the Netflix docuseries Tiger King Murder Mayhem and Madness, opening up new questions into his disappearance. If you're watching this, it's because you've watched Tiger King. I should probably tell you who the hell I am. My name's Tiffany Lewis. I'm Don Lewis's granddaughter. He was the one that was allegedly murdered by Carol Baskin. Before Joe Exotic would write and record the track Here Kitty Kitty, inspired by Don's disappearance and hire a Carol Baskin lookalike to be in the video. Oh, here kitty kitty. Mama's got some treats for you. Oh, here kitty kitty. You can't find taste in the zoo before don lewis would become immortalized as a meme there's this there's this there's this they crank me up so i start marching my way down to carol and hr and i knock on her door and i say carol carol so it turns out don lewis was always a bit of a character with no college degree he became a self-made millionaire worth at least six million dollars but even then he would still search for food in trash bins and he wore second-hand clothes now at the time of this recording, Don Lewis, he's been missing for 23 years. The case was never officially closed, but the last time anything significant happened was back in 2011, when the police asked Miss Vasquez to take a polygraph, but she refused. One of Joe's tacks that he would take against me would be to drug me with ketamine, which is a paralyzing agent, so that they could put me into the back of a car and drive me out into a swamp where they could cut my body into pieces. That's a great plan, Walter. That's ingenious if I understand it correctly. It's a Swiss f***ing watch. Now since the explosion in popularity of the Netflix series, well the Florida police, they've reopened the case. And they're asking everyone for new leads. If I were gonna, you know, if somebody wanted to kill you, then they would put like sardine oil all over you. Something that the cat wants to eat, not something the cat wants to drool on. Because the perfume, that's all they want to do is just drool all over it. What's going on guys? It's Roy Michael McCrudden back at it again with another Before They Were Gone video. This one was requested by you guys. No recent drops on this channel, they included Before They Were Famous on Carol Baskin, also one on Joe Exotic, and we did a Where Are They Now on John Finlay. Now this show, it works off requests, so you guys gotta keep letting us know who to document next in the comments down below. Now you can get a hold of me via my DMs, either through Instagram or Twitter, I'm at McCruddenM, or you can actually text me at 416-846-4986. I actually got a DM the other night from a Carol Baskin. No, no, I'm not even lying. It actually had me really worried. Lady, I ain't going to your big cat rescue and getting fed to no lions. For real. Okay, let's get into this video. Yikes. Jack Donald Lewis was born in Dade City, Florida in 1938 to a single mother of three. Now his mom, she sold fresh bread and she worked as a seamstress. Now growing up, Don, he held several jobs and he worked as a mechanic and a farmhand while still in high school. He graduated a year early from Pasco High School in 1955 and then he continued working. Now it's believed that Don, he was a bit of a ladies man. He met his first wife Gladys Cross while he was working as a bag boy at A&P. Two years later, after their first date, the two got married. Now Don, he was 17 years old at the time and Gladys, she was 14. In another year, the couple, well, they had their first daughter. Now around this time, Don, he started hauling rock and sand in Dade City, for which he saved and bought five trucks. By the 1960s, he was driving around for Texaco and Red Wing Carriers in Tampa. Now he also began to expand his business, buying used washing machines to repair, and then he would resell them at a profit. He soon also began investing in used cars, and then he would sell them at auctions, and eventually he got into real estate. Now Don Lewis, he met Carol in January of 1981, when she was 20 and he was 42. Now Carol, she had just run out of the house after having a heated argument with her spouse. And Don, he was driving by the area. He pulled over next to her and he asked her if she needed a ride. Now when she declined, he returned with a revolver and asked her to hold it to his head if she like didn't trust him. Now what followed was the beginning of a new romance as the two, they drove together through the night. They also spent the night together where they just talked and then fell asleep. Even though I picked up the gun to sit down, I didn't point it at him because I know better than to point a gun at anything unless you intend to kill it. I pretty quickly laid it on the floorboard because I felt confident that if he meant to do me harm, he wouldn't have offered me the gun. In retrospect, I had no idea if it was even loaded. In time, Don pulled over to talk rather than drive and talk. Now Carol at this point, well she knew she had fallen in love with Don. The two, they dated for years, and eventually he broke off his first marriage to Gladys in 1990. 
Then she warned him that Carol, she was a nasty bruh. But despite this, the two got married the following year. Their growing cat collection led Don to build a 40 acre wildlife sanctuary called Wildlife on Easy Street. But over the years, the sanctuary, it turned into just another business for Don. Now this led to several clashes between Don and Carol over how the facility should be run, and eventually it caused marital tension between the two. Now there was a restraining order filed against Carol, but then it was rejected. The order claimed that Carol, she had threatened to kill Don Lewis in the past, but the injunction, it was declined because of free speech. Now her side of the story, well, it was that her life was in danger. One of Joe's tacks that he would take against me would be to drug me with ketamine, which is a paralyzing agent, so that they could put me into the back of a car and drive me out into a swamp where they could cut my body into pieces. <laughs> I don't know, if you mix up who's who, that sounds like a confession to me. Now it was suggested that Lewis, he wished to ship the sanctuary to Costa Rica. Here he had purchased 200 acres of land. This was something Carol, she wasn't particularly on board with. Now it was also revealed that he used to visit Costa Rica frequently for both business and for pleasure. And assuming that he was still a ladies man, well there I can imagine he was up to no good. Now on the date of his disappearance, Don, he had a deal to transport some cars to Costa Rica. Now on August 18th, 1997 onward, well from there on out, Don, he was never heard from again. The next day, police officers, they found his van in a private airport with his keys on the floor. Now the hunt, it carried investigators from the 69 acre wildlife sanctuary that he ran with Carol Baskin, all the way to Costa Rica, where they were looking for leads. But then, still, nothing came up. Carol Baskin has denied any involvement in Lewis's disappearance and has never been arrested or charged in connection with it. Now there was something very fishy about the legal documents in this man's will and what would happen with his inheritance if he went missing. Now in 2011, Carol, she was given the opportunity to take a polygraph test, but she declined. She said her uh, attorney told her that it wouldn't vindicate her for anything, so she decided, why the hell would I bother? It's not gonna help me. Now Joe Exotic and others in the big cat community, they would continuously shine light on the man's mysterious disappearance. Most notably was Joe's catchy song here, Kitty Kitty. Now this was aimed directly at Carol, accusing her of feeding her ex-husband to the tigers. Oh, here yeah, kitty kitty. Mama's got some treats for you. All sorts of different theories floating around. There was the meat grinder, there was the septic tank. No one knew exactly how she did it. Everyone just figured she did it. Now the story, it got plenty of media coverage over the years, but there was never any real findings. Now Don's ex-wife Gladys and her children, they still point the blame at Carol to this day. She was a suspect by the police, but without sufficient evidence, the case had remained open. It was never officially closed and he was considered legally dead in 2002. Now it was at this time that Carol, she finally cashed in her inheritance and only a small percent went to Don Lewis's ex-wife and her kin. And that's something that Don Lewis's granddaughter is still upset with today. She posted this video to TikTok. First and foremost, I do wanna thank the producers for shedding some light on this horrible situation. Um, I haven't heard his voice in over 20 years and just hearing it, was a blessing so thank you for that with the recent explosion and popularity of the netflix series while well, the florida sheriff appointed to the case he decided to reopen the file now this is sheriff chronister who revealed that tips are coming in on the daily but there still isn't anything credible now he also clarified a number of questions that the public had for him for instance the meat grinder well he stated that it had been removed several weeks before his disappearance also, the septic tank, well, that one had actually been installed a few years after Lewis disappeared. And just last week, Carol Baskin, well, she wrote a blog post where she again denied the accusations. She wrote, I never threatened him, and I certainly had nothing to do with his disappearance. When he disappeared, I did everything I could to assist the police. I encouraged them to check out the rumors from Costa Rica, and separately, I hired a private investigator. It just makes for wonderful sales of newspapers, I'm sure for them to speculate that I fed him to the tigers, which is crazy. For now, the case remains open, but if you have any clues, if you have any tips, if you have any inside information, well, here is the sheriff's information. You can call them, you can contact them, and let's uh, let's figure out what exactly happened. As for the rest of the story, well, I'm gonna wrap this one up here because this is before they were gone. Now, let's hope it turns into a where are they now and this man's family, well, at least they can get some answers to his whereabouts. I think that's the least they can ask for. 
All right, guys, I'm gonna wrap up this video here. I think this is the last video we're making in the Tiger King series. But of course, this show, it works off suggestions, so you guys gotta let me know who's next in the comments down below, and I'll see you guys in another video. Boom!